Now, this is the uh, solubility. So by solubility, we know that this one is in the solution. So we put it here, 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 5. Then we will determine how many ions will be formed by using mole ratio. I believe you remember mole ratio, what we did in SHS1. So by mole ratio, when we have one mole of the silver sulfate, we're going to have two moles of the silver according to the equation. So we multiply two by that value. And the answer is what we have here. This is purely mole ratio relation. And we use it to do the calculation. So according to the same mole, the sulfate SO4 2 minus is going to be 1 mole. So that is why we have the same thing, 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 5 over there. So now we have the concentration of the various ions. And these ions are the ions that are going to be used to determine the KSP. So first, we write our KSP formula. That's the various ions raised to the power, the moles. So 2 is what we have there. And then we have the sulfate. Then at this point, we fix in what we have here. So 2.4 times 10 to the power minus 5. We fix it there into the equation. Now notice one thing. We fix this 2.4 times 10 to the power exactly into the equation. The square is over there. So nothing has changed. And the rest is just mathematics for us to punch our calculator and do the work. For the sulfate, it's the same ion that we saw here that we have brought over there. So we have the same sulfate there. Now, we just do the mathematics using our calculator and the KSP is going to give us 6.912 times 10 to the power minus 15. That's quite a huge figure. Now, some of us may be wondering where the unit is. Now, at this level, we are spared when we don't bring the unit. Remember, the KSP, if you are to calculate the unit, is going to take you some time to do all these calculations. Move per DMQ, do multiplication, squaring some of them. So you can leave it as it is over here. Does not necessarily mean it doesn't have the units. So that's how we calculate the KSP for all the ionic compounds, which are going to dissolve sparingly in the aqueous solution. Now let's look at an alternative way of solving this particular question.